Good morning everybody, this is Steve from the Whirly Bogger. Today is April 19th, 2022. Again, standing on the banks of uh, the mighty Yakima River here. And she is mighty today. Again, dealing with a, another bottle of water coming down. Last week, we had everything imaginable shot at us. So rain, snow, sleet, hail, sunshine, the whole works. And uh, if you look in the foothills there, you can see they're covered in white. So last night, more precipitation in the upper county with a mixture of water releases too now coming from the reservoirs. So we're getting to a time in the season, you know, third week in April, the reservoirs are, you know, almost filled the capacity. So they're starting to charge canals for irrigation and doing some water releases too. Uh, most likely in anticipation of, uh, you know, more snowpack melting and having capacity to capture some of that water and not cause major, major flooding in the river. When we have these high water events like this and you see these big dramatic spikes in the water, that will throw them completely out of calibration. So you will get an error reading. It won't be accurate, but you can use that as a, a fine tool to tell you what the river is doing if it's if it's increasing in volume or if it's beginning to recede. And then once the river you, once the river settles out and gets kind of to, back to a normal flow structure, then they'll they'll kind of recalibrate themselves a little bit. But today you can see I mean, the river's still fishable, it's just high. Um, there's lots of debris floating. Lots of logs, lots of sticks, lots of particulates in the water here. But right here above the diversion dam out in Thorpe, you can still see the bottom. So still fishable, but watch it over the next several days. We're supposed to see more water entering the system. So cold nights you know our cold our, our nights are, are well below the freezing level and then our daytime highs um, you know in the 50s we are projected to see some 60 degree temperatures this weekend so we'll just have to watch but it's not gonna get colder most likely we're gonna see you know a lot warmer temperatures to come here in the next couple of weeks and again just like we've been telling you we'll be kind of fighting this this high water over the next uh you know probably two to four weeks i would say just really all depends on what happens with the weather how warm it gets how quickly we can get this low-lying snow out of the foothills and have the reservoirs controlling the flow of the river so it's really going to dictate it but if you're boat fishing it's not a huge deal as long as the river is you know fishable yet you have clarity not fishing in mud wade fishing definitely going to be a lot more difficult but when you get to know the river you know you can you can pick some spots you know you can come here walk across through the cattails over there and up to fish, you know, several of the runs here. So sometimes you gotta be a little adventurous, you know, when you're on foot, that's half the fun is finding them, finding the spots, hunting them down. Tail end of squalas, pretty much done in lower portions of the river. We're still seeing a few in the farmlands area cause they were a little late getting started this year up here. But recognized food farm, so they, be, they eat lots of them. 
So you can always fish a squala, you know, throughout the day, a little dropper on there. Keep your eye out. Uh, it's salmon fly time too, so big stone fly nymphs, you know, size four, size six, blacks and browns. We'll be good. We'll probably start seeing adults towards the end of the month. And then big, big hatches of mayflies happening. March browns, blue wings around two o'clock. So be prepared for that. And then as we as we get towards the end of the month too, we'll probably start seeing some caddis, especially when it starts warming up. So those will become, you know, an important part of your fishing as well. So Rocky Ford continues to be junk, you know, not even really worth your battle there. Uh, just really poorly, poorly managed by the state, of course. Fish and game. Uh, you know, just terrible, terrible fishing there. But the lakes, the lakes are finally reporting good fishing with it warming up. Coronamids mostly. Dry Falls, Lake Lanise, very popular. Lake Nunley. You may want to check too before you head out there because last year's warm temperatures kind of put a hurt on some of the smaller plants. And some of the lakes, Quincy Lake, Burke Lake. So if they haven't restocked those yet, they're probably going to find fairly slow fishing in some of those places. But the seep lakes, you know, all around the potholes, all fishing well. So when the river goes out, you know, it doesn't mean that there aren't places to go. There's lots of fishing in central Washington, so... So, just another uh, tool in your arsenal, you know, to learn how to become a good lake fisherman. But the multi-species, you know, getting to that time of, uh, of the year, we'll start fishing for bass, largemouth and smallmouth, both, uh, as well as trout. So, wide variety of fishing opportunities, you know, to be had yet. So, keep that in mind. And like I said, uh, if you have any questions, just give us a jingle more than happy to help you all right so that concludes your river report today i appreciate you uh viewing and sharing tuning in appreciate everybody's comments